Hi everyone. Um, this tutorial, I'm going to try and show you uh, my method of uh, turning a little goblet with um, with hopefully a captive ring on the stem. You see, loads of people doing them. I'm sure there's some new turners out there who'd like to give it a go. Um, this is the order uh, in which I would do it. Um, now there's a bit of wood which is green and is green, <laughs> uh, so it's not probably not the best to use. Um, over a few days, this if we end up with a goblet, it, it, it's going to warp, it's going to move. Um, but all I'm showing you is the cuts I'm going to make. Um, hopefully, my reasoning behind it, and maybe a couple of little little tips to get an idea of. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is put this um, spur in there, hold it between centres, cut a tenon so I can switch it around and hold it in the jaws. Let's see how we get on. So that ends all messy. I think what I'll do is I'll turn that one into the tenon. The bottom of the goblet, I think I'm gonna um, cut a mortise and then hold it in a mortise and then that'll be the, you know, the, the foot of the goblet. I'm hoping, so it looks like this piece doesn't have much sap board around the edge, just a little bit when I get to this harder wood. It's going to be quite a, hopefully quite a broad goblet, broad foot, enough to put the tenon on. I, I, sorry, I have mortars, I, I prefer mortises. Yeah, let's see what happens. Initially, I'm gonna go right into the pith. Now everyone will be saying, no, you can't. Well, I am. Right, push that in. I'm not even gonna turn much of the edge down. All I'm gonna do is get my Tenon on there. So, let's give this a go. Got wood there. It's, there's still this uh, gouge in there, so that's not giving me a good tenon. So I'm going to cut that further in. Put cut the tenon deeper into the wood, so we'll get a nice clean. Let's have a look at this. So there you go. We've got a nice clean edge. Nice bit of, bit of wood to put this, uh, put the tenon in. The jaws will grip to that. I'm gonna put a slight dovetail, but I don't actually have dovetail jaws. I've got the ones with the the lines on, which bite into the wood. I don't love them to be honest, but uh, it's all I can get with this barracuda. Slightly different tool. Let's 
Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's put this into the chuck. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it around, get rid of the sapwood, and then tidy up the end and get ourselves um, cut that mortars in. And I'm going to use this. Not far, how far off? I'm gonna. I'm happy with that. I want to clean this end up, um, and then put the life center back in because I don't think it's perfectly, perfectly caught in the middle. So let's get the tail in. I'm using the wings of the gouge very sharp. Take my time. That's pretty good. Okay, what we're going to do here is going to perfectly smooth that off. Well, I'm going to cut the tenon in. Cut, I keep saying this, cut the mortise in um, and then tidy it up. Let's put a recess for the logo and see how we get on. This, this wood is beautiful, beautiful. I believe it's pear. Now before I start going crazy, I'm just going to tighten this up. Because we're way out from the chuck here, and I'm going to be putting lateral forces on here, and that, that's going to make it want to come out. This is classic catch territory. Don't need such a big gouge. And swap. Favorites.
pretty good. Okay, let's put a more on here. Of course, it needs to be uh, big enough for the, my, my jaws to go into, but we might have to swap the jaws. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to take some of this wood out. Very carefully go in the other direction. Very easy to get a catch. Like that. Can you use the punk tool again? Tidy this up. Now I'm actually looking in there to see what this, this tool is doing over there. I can say exactly where I'm cutting. Now I already know there's a there's some cracking going on here. I don't think it goes all the way through. Uh, it's not on the other end, so we're all right. I'm going to drill that out, uh, and I need my twenty, which is there. All right, for the little logo, I'm going to put on this one. Just like a lot of things in turning, you do you're doing the kind of back to front, doing the, spending a bit of time on the base. To work my way up to the top. Then I slow it down. Yeah, I'm just going to come across with the gouge again and try and tidy up some of this cracking and tear out and stuff. Take that out of the tail because my elbow doesn't want to hit it anymore. Time for a little bit of sanding. I've got a cut on my finger off a job the other day. It's <laughs> opening and closing. Okay, I'll put a bit of finish on this. Uh, just a bit of friction polish. I'm not really worried that much. I'll just make it look a little bit nicer. And that will do us. 
Now I'm going to find out if these jaws will take this as a mortise or not. But let's just have a look at that base. So there we go. I'm going to put the jaws in there and open up. Hopefully it'll fit into that gap. If it doesn't, we can always put it back on there. Nearly got rid of all that cut out there, but it's all right. It feels pretty good, actually. Now, these, I think, are too big. Let's see. Oh, i tell you what. Feels pretty good. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this off, and then we're going to hollow for the top of the goblet. And just in terms of ideas... Uh, the base is going to rise up to maybe there. Let me get you in a bit closer. The goblet bit will be about there. And then obviously the stem is there. We're doing the hollowing first. Then we'll shape the goblet. Then we'll do the stem. Don't forget, we're going to try and get our little captive ring in there. All right. I could part this off uh, with a parting tool. But taking this off that I don't want, I'm getting to know the wood. I'm getting to know how it's cutting. Idea is we're gonna go down that deep. Well, I could get a force in a bit, and I could drill in. Uh, but let's do a kind of old school and just follow it out. kind of wants to fight you. Then I'm using the wind. And quite a nice cut in there. One yet perfect yet, yeah, but that's not bad for our little goblet shape. I'm gonna um, swap to a round carbide. Let's see if I can't tidy it up. That crack I was talking about, I think it might just be through the whole thing. So the stem of this will have to be careful. Right, 
Right, for our little goblet, that's fine. Now I'm going to tidy up the top, and then I'm going to start shaping the outside. And we are pretty much there. So that will be a place where I start to turn in. So let's tidy up this front face. Okay, I don't think we're doing too bad. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can shape around the edge. Now, to get a bit of stability, we got one of these. And I'm going to stick it in there. And I'm going to bring up my tail stock. Makes contact, a bit of pressure on. You see how it deflates? That's perfectly fine. But that just gives a little bit of strength. While we're shaping this edge. Pretty hard work. All right, all we're doing is trying to get kind of an idea uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut in straight in with the parting tool to get the two grooves for our captive ring. And I'm just going to use this guy uh, and not there. That's why it was find I was finding it a bit pretty hard to turn over there. But nevertheless, I'm going to cut in and see what happens. So, we've got nearly what we need for the captive ring. I'm going to take off some of this bulk of wood here and here so that we can get into the captive ring. made a while ago I particularly think that the hand yeah, of course right. uh, 
I'm just shaping the inside of the ring as best I can. So I'm just using this little uh, screw chisel Uh, it's a bit like a negative red straight there. Okay, how we doing? Looks pretty good. I'm gonna give that a bit of a sand and then we'll try and get through and release it. And then we'll cut it out. You don't have any chance of really of polishing it another time. At the minute it's getting held. Okay, let's see if we can get this loose. I'm just using the mud behind to kind of burnish the inside of this ring. I think I'd like to cut that little bit away so I can use this edge here. Okay, this is just an initial movement. So I want to get into some of that. And it'll harden and burnish the inside of the string. Let's do a bit more shaping and get this narrower. So that the, the, the ring can move more. Have a look. Uh, that's a bit soft wood, that. See that could run through here? It's a little bit soft. I would have preferred it not to be right in the middle of the, of the little thing we've made. Now, I was going to take the ball out and curve this round and get it really close. Uh, but I'm going to have to put it back because I don't think that's got the strength to cope. Yeah, it's all right. Now what we're going to do, we can either leave it that shape. See if you can see this. We'll leave it kind of quite abruptly in there. I'll go and smooth it around with this little chalice. 
what am I going to decide to do? Well, for a start, I think I might harden up that bit there. See the hole? I'm going to harden that up and I'll tell you what I'm going to put it inside it. Right, this stuff is really fine shavings from the bandsaw. So I'm just going to put a bit of medium glue in them holes. Look at this fine sawdust over there. Tap that in. And I think I'll get some of the thin super glue. Just, just on top of that. We are there. Now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to sand this. I'm going to sand it without tennis ball there. <coughs> and apply friction polish. Now the friction polish, you might need to take it easy. Because you can't apply too much in that direction. It would be great if we could <clears throat> get some tape around there and sand the inside of that captive ring so it's looking a bit messy still. And we could, but for this demo, I'm not going to bother. We could stick some sandpaper on there and tie it with the inside of that ring. Uh, but I don't think we need to do that. All I want to show you today is how I would get to this stage. I've got a little goblet with a ring. Okay, let's get a bit of polish on here. There we have our little goblet. It nearly went on the floor. That's all right. There 
is our little goblet with the captive ring. Admittedly, the captive ring is messy on the inside. I should have put a bit of sandpaper on here and spun it and tidied up that inside. But I think that's all right. <laughs> for a bit of greenish wood, I think it's quite cute. Now, I think um, this is highly likely to warp, split, do all manner of things. Um, but right now, feels quite nice. So there you go. There are better videos out there, I am sure. Way better goblets and so on than this one. Well, that's how I do it. And it's not too bad. Don't forget, folks, a turn for the good. Really great. Uh, 35 odd up something people have signed up. I'm uh, delighted. I know Chris Ham in the States is delighted. I've posted the um, the time that the auction will be open. It's the 14th of July to the 21st. So the auction will start on the 14th at some time through that day. Uh, and it'll be live all the way through. Um, and then at some time on, that, on the 21st, uh, all of the pieces, you know, the end of the auction will come up. So if you, if you have friends, r relations, whatever, try and spread the word. I want as many people bidding on these things, these beautiful piece, pieces of work that, that you guys are going to be turning uh, to get as much money as we can for charity. Well, thanks for watching. You take care. All the best. Mine's a tossing in the ocean there,